You're watching Fox 21 News at 9, bringing you the most local news. We are Southern Colorado. Do you want to get a taste? Yeah. All right. Tonight on Fox 21 Local News at 9, a teen tased by Custer County deputies with the body cam shows and what the lawsuit now being filed against the sheriff's office claims. And defining child neglect and abuse, a why a task force says Colorado's law is too vague and targets minority groups and lower income families. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for Fox 21 Local News at 9. I'm Scott Kilberry. Taylor is off tonight. First on Fox 21, one of the owners of the Return to Nature funeral home where nearly 200 bodies were improperly stored will go to trial. To a hearing to, in a hearing today, a judge said that there is enough evidence to try Carrie Halford on multiple charges, including abuse of a corpse, money laundering, forgery, and theft. The judge says that it seems uh, Carrie Halford and her husband John ran into financial trouble and could not maintain their funeral services in Colorado Springs. So they began moving bodies to Penrose. Halford's bond got lowered to $100,000 from $2 million, similar to her husband, whose preliminary hearing is now set for February 8th. Court documents now revealing the disturbing circumstances of a Pueblo security guard's arrest after police found a severed hand in his pocket when they took him in for first degree murder. Fox 21's investigative reporter Rhea Ja tells us the details of the crime. When police arrested Pueblo security guard Solomon Martinez on January 10th for first degree murder, he was working a shift at the Sangre de Cristo Arts and Conference Center. That's when officers found a human hand in a plastic grocery bag inside Martinez's jacket pocket. It's honestly a shock to a lot of people because no, no one ever expected anything, any, anything like this from him. The day before he was arrested, Martinez's old roommate, Joshua Mazurko, said Martinez met up with him at this car wash. He's in uh, that bay right there. Where he tried to bribe him into digging a hole. He looks at me and he says, you want to absolve $1,000 off your debt? I need a 10-foot hole. Mazurko said he was in a state he had never seen him in before. It looks like he had just been in a fight. His hands had blood on them and he was covered in dirt. He said Martinez used a hose to rinse his hands. All he smelled like was blood and I just watched the blood just dra drain off his hands. Court documents say Martinez's other friend told police he watched Martinez drag a body down to Fountain Creek the day before, which police later recovered. The friend showed officers a video he took of the decapitated body lying on the side of the river. I really don't want to get into what I saw on the video, but when I saw it, I felt like as if someone just tore my heart straight out of my chest. I was beyond terrified. In a police interview, Martinez said he did not kill or decapitate anyone. However, he did say he picked up a prostitute the night this allegedly happened. The woman he identified as the prostitute was the same person police identified through the severed hand's fingerprint. DC Investigations and Security, who employed Martinez, said he passed all background checks with no criminal history. When you have an individual that commits a heinous crime and is arrested and he's in one of our polo shirts, it really is very discrediting. But in the same breath, I don't know what else we could have done to try and red flag this individual. Reporting in Pueblo, Rhea Jaw, Fox 21 News. OSHA has fined a Colorado Springs mental hospital claiming they did not put in strong enough measures to protect their employees. A report by OSHA says Cedar Springs Hospital failed to keep the workplace free of hazards. It added employees in direct contact with patients have suffered serious workplace violence related injuries during routine interactions like breaking up fights, providing shots and restraining patients. The hospital tells us they plan to appeal the OSHA ruling. A series of peeping Tom incidents are now tied to a man in Colorado Springs who was arrested for failing to register as a sex offender last year. Police say they have charged 54 year old Troy Deck in connection to several peeping Tom incidents in neighborhoods near Colorado College last summer. Detectives also linked him to nearly a dozen other crimes from December of 2022 through September of 2023. Deck was also identified as a suspect in a burglary and a assault, sexual assault in August. CSPD is asking anyone who believes they may have been a victim to contact them. A lawsuit is being filed against the Custer County Sheriff's Office for excessive force while arresting a 16 year old runaway. We have new body cam footage which shows the moment that she was tased multiple times while being detained and want to warn you that the video may be disturbing. 
Fox 21's Rachel Sauer tells us what the lawsuit is calling for. Yeah, Scott, the lawyer of the now 18 year old tells me it's about accountability. It's based on this video, which shows the minor being put in a sheriff vehicle and then being tased after she refused to get in the car. And again, after being taken out of the vehicle, the sheriff's office says they are volunteering to support any findings. January 18th, 2022, the Custer County Sheriff's Office got a call about a runaway teen and then located her a while later at a trailer. He's done a ping on her phone. She's been tagged as a runaway, meaning she's in danger. That's the legal definition, if you will, of, of, uh, of a runaway is someone who's not at home, not in the custody of their guardian and they're in danger. According to the lawyer, his client was inside a trailer with two men, with at least one who has a warrant for his arrest. <laughs> deputies then find the teen in a closet where one of the deputies is able to put her in cuffs and take her outside. She's been there for um, over 24 hours. She spent the night there. Um, he takes her into custody, immediately puts her in handcuffs. She's incredibly cooperative with him. He takes I her said, outside, um, slams her up against the car. Um, for really no reason. From there, according to the lawyer, the deputy calls for backup and then they attempt to put her in the vehicle. That's when this happens. Oh my God. They take her to the sheriff's office where she refuses to get out of the car. So then her lawyer says they tase her again. It's never an approved circumstance to use um, a taser against someone who is only passive resistive especially if they're handcuffed behind their back, especially if they're under the influence, especially if they're a child. The lawyer alleges this led to the teen seizing and then hyperventilating <laughs> and her continued resistance to paramedics who attempted to examine her. The lawyer also says he wishes the sheriff's office followed up with the two men in the trailer. There are obvious human trafficking, sexual trafficking, red flags that were just completely ignored here. In a statement, the Custer County Sheriff's Office said, quote, the current sheriff, Rich Smith, has not been served yet with the lawsuit, but is very concerned about the allegations. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation is handling the case and will review the body-worn camera footage and any additional information. The Sheriff's Office added, quote, Sheriff Smith volunteered to support their findings up to and including the possibility of criminal charges. I believe most of these officers are no longer with that department. We don't want you know, one bad actor just hopping around to different uh, police departments. So we need to put a stop to those bad apples. Now, following the incident, the teen was requested to be charged with misdemeanor resisting arrest, but the district attorney dropped the charge. Scott, back to you. Very disturbing video. Thank you, Rachel. Well, a statewide task force created to reform Colorado's mandatory reporting laws is now asking lawmakers to change the state's definition of criminal child abuse and neglect. Fox 21's Austin Sack explaining why they think the change is needed. Scott, the Child Protection Ombudsman believes Colorado's definition of criminal child abuse and neglect is too broad. They think there should be some exceptions for families dealing with circumstances like poverty or homelessness. The statewide task force created to reform Colorado's mandatory reporting laws cannot do so without first asking lawmakers to change the state's definition of criminal child abuse and neglect. In the first half of the group's two-year effort, the task force found the laws around child abuse in some states are more defined than Colorado's and are better designed to ensure child abuse reporting laws do not disproportionately impact individuals of color or families with disabled communities. There are about 15 states right now um, that have acknowledged that um, poverty, homelessness, um, or even mental health should not be conflated with being a child abuse act. Um, so as you can see, uh, this is still a relatively new phenomenon for this field at some level, and Colorado is certainly um, in line for the infancy of this policy development right now. Now, the group plans to meet in January and February in order to create recommendations for a change. The task force wants to bring Colorado to the top of the list when it comes to addressing child abuse and neglect and say that starts with training. Coming up at 10 p.m., we'll tell you the concerns this task force has over the state's hotline and what they want to do to fix it. Scott, back to you. All right, look forward to that report. Thank you, Austin. Well, still ahead on Fox 21 News at 9, a food truck broken into causing property damage and loss. What the heartbroken owner says is irreplaceable and is pleased to the public and a gruesome discovery by a new homeowner the body part they discovered in the freezer and what investigators are now saying you're watching fox 21 news at 9 bringing you 